Hey there, Fit Fam. Welcome to the only podcast where we're breaking the mold and rewriting the rules. I'm here to debunk the myths, spill the tea, and serve a hefty dose of reality. No matter where you're at in your journey, we've got something for everybody. So buckle up because we're about to unleash the basics in the most unapologetic way possible. From shedding pounds to embracing your inner badass, I'm here to remind you that skinny is so last season and the basics are anything but boring. So grab your favorite piece of protein and your water bottle and get ready to be empowered, entertained, and educated because being a basics bitch has never looked this good. Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to Don't Call Me Skinny with The Basics Bitch. I am so excited to have you here. Obviously, this is the first time you guys have heard my new Wednesday intro. I hope you like it. It's shorter. It's definitely more me, and it's definitely more in alignment with what I am really all about, uh, if I had to be honest. So I'm super excited to be here with you guys today. I hope you have an amazing, uh, had an amazing holiday, I should say. Um, and I know that uh, we did uh, celebrate lots of family time, spend time with people that we love, and it always feels so good to do. So I hope you were able to enjoy and do the same thing as well. So that being said, you guys, we're going to talk here about some things that I've noticed over this last year about why my clients don't reach their goals or why people in general don't reach their goals. So I'm when I talk about my clients, I am super transparent that I have a lot of clients that get super fucking badassery results. And I have a minor subset of clients that really fucking struggle. And neither one necessarily has anything to do with my coaching because my coaching stays pretty status quo. Um, how I coach the people who show up is how I coach the people who show up. I don't know if that makes sense, but like, uh, if you've ever worked with me, I treat everybody the same, not that that everybody has the same protocol, but I show up the same for every fucking client that pays me. I, I, I believe I do a really good job at what's the word I'm looking for at, at making sure that I'm serving the client appropriately. Okay. So this isn't a, a client signs up and, all of a sudden I ghost them or something and I don't give them what they need. Okay. Um, but I want to talk about a lot of things that my own clients struggled with this last year, as well as what I just noticed in this industry or women doing in general, uh, throughout the, across the board, whether they're my client, not my client. And even some of my clients that are, have, that have had these badassery results that I talk about, still struggle with some of these. Like this isn't like, oh, everybody, like my clients that get badass results don't have any problems. They're just like life's fucking perfect, right? A lot of my clients have had to work through some of these things and some people aren't ready to do that. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that person or wrong with not being ready or able or even willing. <laughs> and that's part of my, <laughs> part of my uh, list here today is whether you're not just able, but if you're even willing to rip that bandaid off, if you will. So on that note, let's get right to it. So we're going to talk about eight different things that I see in this industry. Specifically, I know that my clients struggled with as well and uh, how to kind of they're almost like these little myths that we tell ourselves or these limiting beliefs that we tell ourselves so that we don't have to do the work. Um, so here we go. Number one, always being on a diet. You guys, I love you all so fucking much because this used to be me. It used to be me. Um, and I understand the sentiment because the idea and the goal is to lose weight, lose weight, lose weight, lose weight, lose weight, lose weight. That's all we want to do. Well, what do we have to do? We have to cut our calories, right? You have to be in a deficit, which requires you to go on a diet. Okay. Now, that being said, the majority of you have some kind of idea of what you fucking want to look like when you look into the mirror, when you see your naked body and you're like, I don't like that. But what I would like is this. Okay. A lot of times that's going to require an actual maintenance and building phase. People don't understand that when you lose, I, I've talked about this many times, but when you lose weight, whatever's underneath when you're fat is the same as when you're not fat. So if you have no muscle, this is how we get the term skinny fat. If you have no muscle underneath your fat, even when you lose weight, you're going to look skinny fat essentially. You're going to look like, you're, like your skin's just hanging off your bones. There's no definition raise your hand unless you're driving. Cause if you're driving, you need to have like, you know, multiple like hands on the wheel. Okay. Raise your hand. If 
you've ever said the phrase, I just want to get toned. I just want a toned body or something with the word toned in it. Okay. If you've ever said this phrase and you have only done Orange Theory, boot camps, Jazzercise, Zumba, or all these classes to lose weight, you will never get toned. Okay. You're never going to have a toned body. A toned body requires muscle. Muscle requires progressive overload. Progressive overload happens during strength training. Period. You can't, you, you can't create something in your brain. I mean, you can, but you cannot create this facade in your brain that you're going to get your tone body by jazzercise or by doing fucking nothing or just by being on a diet. Okay. You cannot always be on a diet. If you want a toned body, you have to go into a maintenance phase, into a slight sur- surplus of a phase, what we call a gaining phase, and fucking lift weights. No, you're not going to get bulky like a man. People don't realize how fucking hard that is. <laughs> like, if it was that fucking simple, we'd all be doing it, trust me, okay? It's not that simple, right? So you have to make sure that you're doing the thing that you're supposed to fucking do, you can't always be on a diet. So many of us are just like, I'm on this diet, I'm on this diet, I'm on this diet, I'm that diet, I'm on this diet, I'm that diet. Diet, 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 diet. It's like badge of honor. I'm on a diet. I started a diet today. I don't carbs today. Diet. I started a diet. Did you start your diet? I started my diet. Yeah. It's like like we walk around with like that chalk shit on our fucking cars. It's like started my fucking diet today. Honk. Honk if you started your diet too. Honk, honk. Oh my God, I want to do that. I want to fucking put that on my car. Honk if you started your diet. <laughs> I'm going to die. I might do this. This this could be epic. Okay. Can't always be in a diet. Period. Okay. Number two, you're not focusing on one specific goal. Too many of uh, people are out here doing, I want to lose fat and put on muscle. Just pick one. I've, I've done a whole podcast on this. I don't know what number it is, but go find it. Pick a goal. Just pick a fucking goal. Either you're going to lose the weight, you're going to lose fat, or you want to put on muscle. Just pick one. Be decisive. This is what I'm going to do. Putting on muscle will require you not to be in a diet. Oh my God. So crazy. I know. Yes. So crazy. Pick a, pick a goal. What is your goal? You want to get strong? Let's go for it. You want to fucking, you know, lose some fat and show your definition because you are a strength trainer and you've been doing it for a while now. Let's go for it and you've hit all the basics, and all of that makes sense for you to go into a deficit, cool. Awesome. Okay? Focus on one motherfucking thing. Stop hopping all over the place. Okay. Number three. (laughs) This one's fun. You're not realistic on what you can do or what you want to do. Oh, yeah, I'm calling some of you out. I'm going to call some of you out. You're not realistic on what you can do or what you want to do. How many of you guys have wanted things before in your life? You're like, yes. Oh my God, I want to make a million dollars. It's fucking hard. Never mind. Just fucking never mind. Just fuck it. Never fuck it. Never mind. <laughs> right? How many times has that happened? I'm going to make a million bucks this year. Right? Have you ever like thought about that? And then you think about what would it actually take for me to make a million dollars in one year? What would that look like? What would that take out of me? What kind of work would I have to put in? What would that, what, how would that even work? Is that even possible? Right? And then you're like, "Mm, okay, so I know what I would have to do to do that. And I can't do that. But yet so many times we want all these things out there, but then we're not willing or we can't even do the things that it's going to take to get there. Like, oh my God, I really want to lose weight, but, but I have this, I have that, I have this, Johnny has bald, Billy has this, Susie has this, blah, 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 blah. I don't know why we always use Johnny, Billy, and Susie, but we do. Um, I, I don't know. Like you want this thing, but you aren't willing or can't do the things to get you there. It doesn't mean that those things are not uncomfortable. It doesn't mean that those things aren't uncomfortable, okay? But you have to be willing to do the things to get the result that you want. If you want to make a million bucks, you better be ready to put in the fucking work to get it to happen. 
Remember, this is like, I, I don't know how many times I've done something around the level, level two effort, but level 10 results. Too many out here want level 10 results, but barely getting two and a half on the, on the scale of effort. Not going to work. Not going to work. Okay. Number four, this is something I've had to really focus on myself, but you had the fucking toddler palate. Okay. You just want fucking mac and cheese and chicky nugs and you don't want to eat vegetables and be a fucking adult about it. You just don't want to do it. You just don't want to do it. Now I'm going to say this. There are times when I always talk about food is fuel and food is fuel and food is fuel. And that is true. That's one small piece of what food is really because food is extremely emotional. It can be extremely um, social, right? So we kind of have these almost two very different ends of the spectrum of what is actual food because yes, it is fuel in the hindsight if we want to look at the technical term, but how many of us use food, use food for other things? We use it as coping mechanisms. We use it in social gatherings. We use it uh, to eat things that we love and enjoy, right? There's nothing wrong with eating things that we love and enjoy, but how can we make those things that we love and enjoy not the same things that a toddler eats that has no fucking veggies? I will say this too. I heard on a podcast not that long ago that this one person was going to make his child eat veggies because he doesn't have a child to my knowledge. Maybe I'm wrong or maybe the child's very young, but he's going to make, when he has a child, he's going to make his child eat veggies because they're good for him and they fuel his body appropriately, give him micronutrients. Good luck with that, sir. I'd love to see the day you have a child (laughs) and you force your kid to eat shit. I struggle with this with my own kids. This is a real thing. It's a real fucking thing. I can finally get my one kid to eat a fucking shredded carrot. (sighs) Praise the Lord. Praise the motherfucking Lord. It, it happened. Okay, great. Like, that's where we're at. It's real life. But as a grown-ass adult, I don't care if you eat two or three veggies, and that's it. And I don't have a very wide palate of veggies either. I eat broccoli, carrots, green beans, green or oh, any kind of color, like a bell pepper. What I eat sprouts. Mm, what else do I eat? Pea pods peas. I do eat corn, but really it just, just makes you poop. So whatever. So those are the things that I eat. I don't have a very wide variety. I don't eat mushroom. Oh, I eat tomatoes. I don't like cucumbers. I don't like pickles. I don't, I don't like any of that stuff. Um, but when I do eat vegetables, those are the vegetables that I eat. And I have at least five or six go-to vegetables that I can rotate through every week so that I'm getting different micronutrients in. Okay. You're not going to get anywhere you want eating like a fucking toddler. I'm sorry, but like you have to like grow the fuck up, grow up. You're not a toddler anymore. Do something because it'll benefit you right now. If you want a result again, going back to number three, (laughs) just because you want something, are you willing to do what it takes to get it? That's going to require veggies because it'll make you poop too. Good fiber. Okay. Um, number five, here we go. This one was kind of my favorite one to come up with, but treating your training program like it's Tinder or like you're scrolling Instagram, like swipe right, swipe right, swipe right. I'm going to do this girl's booty, booty bumping music, uh, (laughs) booty bumping music, booty bumping workout. I'm going to do this girl's, you know, back program workout. I'm going to do this. I saw this one on Instagram. I'm going to do swipe right, do that one. Y'all, this is why I don't post shit like this on my page. I'll post photos of me working out. I've even posted a video of me um, showing the difference between a dumbbell row and um, a hammer hammer machine row and why it's different. Fixed range of motion versus allowing your body to move versus angle versus all sorts of stuff. Those are things that I will show you. It doesn't mean one's right or one's wrong, but there's a reason that they're not the same. Okay. However, there's no fucking consistency weird consistency, right? There's no fucking consistency. You're over here. I I actually had this conversation the other day with a couple of former Orange Theory 
uh, people, not not coaches, but like people who work the back end of Orange Theory. And they were talking about like, yeah, well, it's better now with the strength blocks and this and this and this. And I gave my two cents because that's what we were really there for. And I said, I still think it's shit. I'm, I'm sorry, but I think it's shit because there's no progressive overload. There's no mesocycle. There's no eight weeks of doing the same exercises over and over and over again and keeping track of them. I said, when Orange Theory does that in their strength block, then we'll call it good. And until now, it's just this idea to get people to believe, oh, now we have strength training. No, you don't. You have Tinder training. Okay. That's what I'll call it. Tinder training where you just, you do a Tuesday block and Thursday block is completely different. And then the next Tuesday is completely different. And then the next Thursday is completely, what the fuck is the point? There's no point in that. Stop treating your, your training like it's a fucking Tinder role. It's not. Okay. I actually program people. If you would like just a program, I do that. I do generic programs. So like the basics of strength training, or if you're looking for something a little bit more individualized, you get loaded up into my app and you get your program. Boom. So wonderful, isn't it? It's very simple. Okay. So if you're looking for something that's just a little more consistent, let me know. I'm also doing my in-person thing where we're doing a six-week block where you get uh, one day a week in person with me. And then I actually individualize your programming to do three days outside of training with me. And you can do a gym, at-home dumbbell program, whatever you want. Bada bing, bada boom. Not Tinder swiping. To the right, to the right. Okay. None of that shit. Number six. You guys are going to love this one. You're not focused on the basics. And I've talked about this so recently, even in last week's podcast. You think you're special. I'm sorry. You think you think you are defying the law of thermodynamics. You do. It's it's my hormones. The moment you go, yeah, but yeah, but there is no personal responsibility. And that shit is fucking scary. There is zero personal responsibility in blaming everything else except your own fucking actions. Now, again, when you have the basics down, you're eating protein, you're fucking getting movement in an appropriate amount for you, by the way, for you, right? Getting in water, getting in sleep, managing your stress, and nothing is changing then, Uh uh-huh. Now we have a fucking problem. Yes, you might be an anomaly. You might be different. You might be special. But before those things happen, I don't give a shit what kind of medicine you take. I don't give a shit what kind of issue or gut health or thyroid. I don't give a shit. I don't care. I do not care. Don't care. Don't care. I do not care. You're not fucking special. You're not fucking special. I wasn't special either. My always big line that I used to go to all the time. This is what I used to tell people all the time. So I tell everybody, I'm big bone. Yeah, you bitches, I'm big boned. I'm just Italian. This is just how we are. Oh, yeah, on my mom's side, we just have these wide hips. Yeah, we just tease about it. Wide load coming through. Yeah, I'm just special. I'm not fucking special. I wasn't special. You want to know what I wasn't? Honest about my fucking actions. I had no personal responsibility for my fucking self. Period. It's the truth. And people don't like that. And it's very difficult to look at yourself in the mirror and say, you fucked up. You have ownership in why you are the way you are. Don't sit here and tell me that, uh, like the other day, I, uh, not the other day, but when we went to, um, what is it called? We went to Texas Roadhouse while we were in Ohio, okay? And this isn't me passing judgment. This is not me saying that what people are consuming. I don't, I don't necessarily care, but I saw somebody's plate came out and I don't even know who it went to. I I didn't even see who the person was. Okay. But they had on a steak, which is great. Good job. Go, go team for the steak. And then they had a loaded baked potato and a thing of rice on their plate. After who knows if they even ate rolls. I have no idea. Again, I have no idea anything about this person or where it went to. What I can tell you is there was no vegetable on that plate. I would not classify that as a balanced meal. 
But people who go out and eat like that, that was probably just in that meal alone. If they did not consume any butter and any rolls, which I don't know, you have to be psychotic to not consume butter and rolls there unless you can't. Like if you're gluten-free or something like that, I don't, I don't think they have gluten-free rolls. But like, okay, outside of that, outside of the quote-unquote, let's call quote-unquote normal person, I don't, whatever the fuck that means, but we'll, we'll call it a normal person, uh, like me. Like me, I'm normal. Like, I mean, I'm not really, but we'll classify somebody like me, okay? Typically has one to two rolls at minimum there, plus butter, okay? So I'm not even include the butter, but that plate alone was close to, and this again is me in the ballpark, if they ate everything on the plate, which again, I don't know if they did, okay? If they ate every single thing on the plate, was probably close, I would, I would guess anywhere from 15 to 2,000 calories, 1,500 to 2,000 calories. And that doesn't even include anything else that this person has consumed the rest of the day. And so when I see plates like this going out at places like that, where I go, there's not even a vegetable on that plate. And it, they have two sides. So I know one of their sides wasn't a salad. Okay? Because I typically get a salad with a side. I love their salad at Texas Roadhouse. So that's what I'm talking about. There's no personal responsibility. And then those same people, and I'm not saying that this person who orders, because I don't know, again, anything about them, but people who eat like that will then cry and say, "Uh, but I can't lose weight. But it's my thyroid. But it's my gut. But it's my hormones. But it's my medicine. It's the same people. Because there's no awareness piece. There's no personal responsibility in understanding what you're actually doing. So in the basics, if you did the basics of health, you wouldn't have that excuse. And you would have personal responsibility of the things that you have ownership over. So you have to get focused on the basics. So if you're not focused on the basics, here we are. Here's another one. Every occasion is a special occasion, meaning every time you go out, every time you have brunch with the girls, every time you go on girls weekend, every time you go to a bar, every single time you meet up with a friend, every time you have a date night, every time you go to your mom's house because she makes amazing food, right? Every time you go do something else, it's special. Oh, there there went my headphones uh, cord. That was funny. Every time. There's never a time it's not a special occasion. Every time we do this, we're having two to three, four drinks every single time because we're social people. I have a client who's extremely social, very, 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 very social. We have had to really work on the fact that you don't need to have six drinks every time you go to dinner because you're literally eating out every single night. And how do we order when we are eating out consecutive nights in a row? It doesn't mean that we're like everything we eat is bad when we go out, but not every time we go out does it need to be the special thing. It's just food, right? Back to that spectrum of like food is fuel and food is emotional and amazing and social. And where do we fall in that line? And we have to come to a middle place of that, right? So every time that you go out, you don't have to treat it like it's fucking you know, Christmas, every time you go, just like tomorrow is Christmas Eve. Christmas is one motherfucking day, not a whole fucking week. New Year's Eve is one day, not a whole week. Thanksgiving is one day, not a whole week, but that is not, not how we treat it. I talked about that over, uh, over Thanksgiving when we made the chocolates and I gave my example of we always get Arby's and order pizza and it again here it is special occasion but it's special and it's meaningful and it has like you know it's it's emotional and it's rooted in who we are about this tradition that we do with our family great great I'm gonna sit over here and eat my chicken sandwich with tomato cool and that's what I did right because not everything can always be special. We have to make sacrifices. There is a uh, thing about my gym, up at my gym. There's something along the lines of like, it's the saying, and I walk by it twice a day at minimum. So you'd think that I would have it memorized by now, but it's something about like not being 
if you want to get to your goals, like you're going to have to make sacrifices in order to do so, essentially. It says that in a way cooler way, though, like way cooler than I just did. Can't always have special occasions. You're going to have to sacrifice something somewhere, okay? Mm. This one's good. This is the last one, number eight. You have an obsession with sand and not rocks. Mm. What does that mean? Okay, so if we're looking to fill this vase of rocks, okay, and you fill it with all the sand, you're not going to have very many space for rocks, essentially, if you start with the sand, okay? The rocks, let's consider, are our five basics, right? Stress, movement, water, protein, stress management, or sleep, sorry. Those are our, our rocks. We have to put the rocks in the container first. Then, and only then, can we fill it with sand. What is the sand? Intermittent fasting, low carb, no fats, uh, all your fad diets, <laughs> uh, meal timing, supplements, all these little other fucking things that don't actually fucking matter. You think they matter, but they don't actually fucking matter in the big picture if they're not one of our big rocks. If they're not one of the main things, one of the basics, but let's focus over there so we don't have to focus on the rocks. And then we'll be pissed when we don't get the result that we want because we're too busy worrying about the sand and not about the rocks. So these are my eight always in a diet, not focusing on one goal, not being realistic on what you can or want to do. You eat like a fucking toddler with you know, veggies and, or not veggies, mac and cheese and uh, tendies. Uh, you treat your training program like it's Tinder. You're not focused on the basics and you think you're special. Every occasion is a special occasion and your obsession is with the sand and not the rocks. Eight things that are preventing you from getting where you want to go. These are big things that I saw this year. Big things. Worried about all the little things, not the big things. But these are the main things that I saw hold people back, whether they were my clients or whether they are some random Facebook group. In some random Facebook group. Okay? These are the things that are holding you back. These are the things that you have to have a coming to Jesus moment about or with. If you want change, you have to be willing to accept personal responsibility and understanding that you play a role in your results. You are the keeper of your results. You have to take ownership of your results or lack of, or lack of. As I stated, what I do for clients may look a little different individually for clients, but it's not. I show up as a coach all the same. I meet my client where they are and we start there and we move forward. It's up to the client to be willing to make the sacrifices in the short term to get the long-term goal that they want. But these are the main things here that I have seen this year prevent either my clients themselves or other women not attain their goal. Okay, so maybe you one of these hit. Maybe you're like, man, I am not realistic on what I can do or what I want. I really need to work on that. Man, I'm really not focusing on one goal. I feel all over the place. Like, man, I'm blaming everything on everything except me. Figure out where you're at. Where are you holding yourself back? Grab it by the fucking horns and move forward. Make it your bitch. Okay. All right. Outside of this, you guys, there will be one more uh, podcast for the year. I'm pretty excited. Can't believe it. Also, again, link in the show notes. Um, we are finishing up with Weight Loss for Real Women. This uh, 3.0 round, 4.0 starts January 15th. So there's lots of things kind of coming up on the front end of January. So if you're unsure or if you are you don't want to miss something, just reach out. Let me know what you're interested in. So we have uh, Weight Loss for Real Women going to relaunch here again. We have the in-person thing. If you're local to me where you get one day a week here in person, um, it's my hybrid training program. Um, and then of course there's all sorts of slews of other ways, especially one-on-one. -on -one. That is the most effective and efficient way, in my opinion, to get to your goals. So 
any questions about any of those, please let me know. Again, I'm so excited for all the changes. Thanks for bearing with me as I kind of realign myself with this podcast and really truly hone in on what I'm really trying to portray and get out to you guys and uh, change your lives. So I hope you have an amazing hump day. Hopefully everybody's had a great holiday and we have one more to get through. It's hard to believe like back when I talked about Halloween and here we are getting into 2024. All right, you guys, I will catch you on Friday. No filter. Thanks so much for listening today. If you laughed, learned, or just felt a vibe, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Your support keeps this ass train chugging along. If you're ready to embrace the basics with a twist, follow me on social media. Links are in the show notes, and let's see the ways we can work together. All right, basics bitches, you're not just listeners, you're part of the revolution. Remember, skinny's out, basics are in, and you're looking damn good doing it. So until next time, stay basic. <laughs>